Ultimate General American Revolution is finally here, and Game Labs, whose previous titles include UG Civil War and one of my favorites, Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, have truly done something special. American Revolution is years in the making and is essentially the definitive combination of all of their past developments in one game. Huge, beautiful land battles, fantastic tactical naval engagements, and of course all for the first time in the series on a new sandbox campaign. Now, I've personally been playing the game since well before release, the developers kindly gave me earlier access, and I've spent over 100 hours playing about 5 campaigns, so I think I've got a lot of experience to make a thorough review. In this video, I'll be talking about whether American Revolution is worthy of being called a true competitor to Total War, whether it's a challenging, replayable, and fun historical strategy game, and whether, with all of that in mind, if it's worth buying for the standard price of $50. Set during the historic American Rebellion against the mighty British Empire, Ultimate General American Revolution is first and foremost a proper sandbox campaign. As the colonies, you're given the task of defeating the British and kicking them off the continent once and for all. And to do so, you need to develop a robust economy to build buildings, construct a navy, produce weapons and trading goods. You need to research new technologies, engage in espionage and intrigue, and command your armies and navies around this beautiful map of North America. Starting a campaign, you'll be taken through a sort of prologue of George Washington's life, going through major events that define his personal life, his military and political career, and each event comes with a decision to make which essentially defines the type of leader you will be. One who prioritizes battlefield morale, maybe, or equipment production, or maybe influence in the colonies to gain more local sympathy towards the revolution. The Americans start with a handful of states, including Massachusetts and Connecticut, and you're immediately thrown into the Battle of Concord and Lexington. Here, in a defensive position with reinforcements on the way from nearby towns, you must hold against superior British troops and, of course, learn the ropes of land battles in UG American Revolution. As a first battle, it is super fun as you get a hang of the controls for troop positioning, the pace of movement, and the differences in ranged versus melee engagement. It is absolutely possible to lose this battle, mind you, especially on higher difficulties. But on easier settings with the arriving reinforcements, the Americans, by some miracle, are victorious, and you've learned a great deal about the basics of fighting battles. With the British in full retreat now, it is time to expand and liberate other cities and towns, and soon you gain access to new campaign mechanics like the headquarters, where you hire officers, unlock new departments for your military, and begin researching new technologies. You gain access to the market, where you can buy anything from muskets, cannons, resources, and even entire ships for your navy. You unlock statewide infrastructure and construction, allowing you to build up a regular production of weapons and resources that you can even sell on the market, and finally you get access to the Diplomacy tab, allowing you to see all the other nations in the campaign and their diplomatic statuses with each other. Now all of this is played in real time, which means you'll be busy deciding how many civilian rifles to buy from the market when suddenly you get a message telling you the New Jersey Patriots have donated some ammunition to the cause, or an infamous smuggler offers to join your ranks as an officer, or worse, you hear word of a large British force crossing the Atlantic with no way to know in which state they may land. All of this is dynamic real-time gaming, makes for some excellent challenging circumstances and is one of the reasons why this game is so great. I'm often making difficult decisions, balancing my attention between how to maximize production here, how to make progress creating a navy there, and all the while being given a new problem that will have a meaningful impact on campaign progression down the line. And all of this is just scratching the surface of the depth and detail in this game. UG American Revolution does a really good job of giving you 
choice, meaningful choice, from what type of muskets you want a newly recruited regiment to use to being able to capture a set of cannons left behind by a retreating enemy on the battlefield, to how to pay your cabinet. There's just a lot to take in and process, and the sheer volume of all of these decisions you have to make creates a sense of urgency and importance to each one. You can't just go around conquering city to city like in Total War, you actually have to strategize your army movement, prioritize certain states and territories over others, and believe you me, one wrong move, one lazy decision, and the AI will absolutely punish you for it, which is just awesome. It makes sense, of course, that as the Americans, you're basically playing a battle of David versus Goliath. The British will always vastly outnumber you on the battlefield, and you will always lose territory that is just too difficult or out of the way to defend. It's sad, but also amazing that in your efforts to defeat the British, you ultimately need to be able and capable of making some hefty sacrifices. Even on easy or normal difficulties, if you don't play your cards right, which I often did earlier, Early on, you will get overwhelmed by a stagnating economy, an invasion force of British troops fresh across the Atlantic, or even local Americans who you've neglected and have decided to become loyal to the enemy. It's an incredibly unforgiving game, which is both historically authentic and really fun. Now, all that being said, there are a couple of areas that I think could be improved. UG American Revolution comes with a line of sight mechanic, for example, that has something called delayed reporting. And what that means is the areas that your general isn't present in will be under fog of war, even your own territory. And you must rely on messenger couriers to send word of allied and troop enemy movement, with circumstances often forcing you to make a move if the couriers are really slow in a particular area. On paper, this is a great, unique system. You have to anticipate where the enemy might be moving if you want to catch them before they reach an allied town. And you often get reports of fog of war battles days after they've happened, which is really quite interesting. But this would really benefit from having its own UI panel, stylized in a way to show regiments in fog of war and their levels of morale, ammunition, etc., their last known locations or engagements and casualties or at the very least, there should be an alert system for all courier messages with a breakdown of troop movements and their implications. It's a really nice idea. I haven't seen in any other game like this, but it could be better. Then there's also the fact that, as an early access game, of course, there are very clear areas where it definitely feels very early access. A lot of work needs to be done on things like the economy, which doesn't have a very clear breakdown of income and expenses at the moment. Naval production is extremely slow to build and without a dry dock to keep them at, are just not sustainable against British fleets that swoop in and destroy them, and loads of other things. I mean, there needs to be more hotkeys for simple stuff like pop pausing or unpausing time. The campaign camera zoom could be way higher on the map. And there are, of course, plenty of bugs and issues, ranging from not being able to assign weapons to a regiment at times, or buildings not having the desired effect. And I'm saying these things not to criticize the game, to be clear, but to make you aware of the fact that UGAR is ultimately an early access game. So it's important to be realistic and keep in mind that as with any game like this, with time, most most, if not all, of these problems will be addressed and resolved. And then, of course, there are the battles, and it has to be said that the Ultimate General series has come a long, long way from its early days in Gettysburg. We may not have beautiful graphical fidelity and detail of Total War battles, but at least we have proper tactical gameplay where frontline infantry hold, take cover, have firing lines and proper meaningful morale, where ammunition, fatigue, your food and provisions, the types of muskets, the general proximity all makes a massive difference. It's honestly an awesome fun time, especially as with the Americans, you are the underdog, so you have no choice but to bring as many troops as possible to battles against elite British redcoats to genuinely have a chance at winning. Which of course means huge, massive battles on a large scale with thousands and thousands of men. 
But as always, there is absolutely room for improvement here as well. As it stands, artillery and flanking cavalry are very overpowered and will without a doubt melt units in seconds. At times it is good fun, but as you grow your military and progress in your campaign, they become very easy to exploit. You will often find troops have a hard time maintaining cover, maintaining orders, and often, despite being a ranged, focused affair, you'll be charged by enemy infantry in the most random times, which can get quite annoying. Naval warfare is present and extremely fun when you get a chance to play them, but they are few and far between, and they have their own set of issues as well that the devs are working on. I do really like the reinforcement mechanics in this game. I do like the impact of having different types of infantry, weapons, different levels of experience, all on the battle balancing, but there's still a lot of work to be done here. In general, there are also just missing features that the game desperately needs. On naval battles, there's currently no way to retreat, which is a little bit baffling. On either type of battle, there's no surrender mechanic, which is also doubly annoying. It would be great to be able to chase after a retreating army or pence them after a big battle to cut off their supply lines and then force the enemy to surrender their troops and all of their equipment. Speaking of equipment, another major difference from previous games is the lack of salvageable weapons and artillery. Post-battle loot should be more prominent here. I understand the devs are trying to force the players to prioritize weapon production, but you should also be able to loot a few dozen or at least a couple hundred guns, ammunition, provisions, especially in the early game where these things can have a huge impact. Elements of gameplay like these are still being developed, of course, and fine-tuned, but hopefully in time we'll see all of this be improved. Overall, I would say Ultimate General American Revolution does a great job of depicting the realism, the challenge, the uphill battle of this historic war, giving you the chance to play out a sandbox campaign, the fight against the British. It's all a super fun time. Are there areas that need attention? Sure, bugs to be ironed out? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, you've got a game with real depth and strategy where decisions you make have a long-term impact and and where the AI will punish you for making basic mistakes. The campaign is fun, the battles are huge and engaging, and I have really, really enjoyed my time with the game for the last couple of months. I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. Definitely replayable, lots of fun, and yet still in need of some key improvements to reach its full potential. And that's it for today, guys. After playing for over 100 hours in multiple campaigns, this has been my definitive review of Ultimate General American Revolution, a fantastic effort by Total War modder Darth Vader to create a modern strategy game set in one of my favorite conflicts in history with some brilliant depth and fun. It honestly impressed me, and for 50 bucks, if you're a fan of the period and decent strategy gaming, I think it'll impress you too. I really hope you enjoyed this review of Ultimate General American Revolution and found it informative. If you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think about everything I've discussed here today. Subscribe for more strategy game content, gameplay, and reviews just like this. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.